Welcome to the Rochester, New Hampshire History Podcast, a monthly show that will shine a light on a piece of history that has been all but forgotten. In the early 20th century, there were two things that most Americans could count on. Mail delivery from the U.S. Postal Service and a weekly visit from the milkman. The milk arrived in glass bottles, which you cleaned and left outside for the milkman to pick up. It was the good old days, an era of trust. Money was left on the doorstep along with the order for the next day. In some cases, brought into the kitchen and placed in the refrigerator if the owner was at home. To many in Rochester, Roy's Dairy was their local milk company, and Henry Roy was their local milkman. The older generation still remembers the trucks from Roy's Dairy making deliveries, while the younger generation has only known milk as an item you buy at a grocery store. In 1924, when Henry was only 15, he worked full-time at Canute Farm in Dover, selling them milk. Shortly thereafter, the farm burned down and Henry was forced to find work elsewhere. Henry found work in Sanford, Maine in a shoe factory as a leather cutter. While there, he met and married Dorothy Poland. His love and interest of the milk business was too much, and he left the shoe factory. Henry and Dorothy moved to Rochester, bought a house on Summer Street, and plunged into the milk business. In 1938, he became the manager of the Jones Dairy Products. He would go to the train station every day and pick up milk. He then delivered the milk to stores and homes throughout Rochester. The Jones Dairy Product Company was bought out by a much larger company. Henry Roy declined to stay with the big company and decided to start his own dairy business. He started Roy's Dairy, and most of the customers that were with Jones Dairy Products became customers of Roy's Dairy. In 1942, he built his own processing plant in the back of his home on Summer Street. Up to eight local dairy farms supplied Henry with unprocessed milk. During World War II, gasoline was rationed, so Henry Roy made area milk deliveries for the horse and buggy. Henry's cart had the slogan, Remember Pearl Harbor, on its side. His horse was named Babe. During the spring and summer months, Henry would put rubber shoes on Babe. Then he put on shoes with studs for wintertime walking. Henry trained the horse himself, and Babe learned the daily route that Henry went every day for milk delivery. During the 1940s, the store in Summer Street was expanded as many customers found their way to the store. It was located near a bus stop, and the bus passengers would buy lunches and milk from the Summer Street store. Henry started delivering box lunches at Allen Hall Box Shop. Since the box shop was close to his Summer Street home, he sometimes delivered the lunches in a wheelbarrow. The lunches became popular, and he started selling lunch boxes on his delivery route. Back then, the dairy products were kept cold with ice from the Milton Three Ponds. The ice was stored in insulated barns and used in the summer months. On hot, sweltering summer days, Henry would hand out ice to kids while making deliveries in Rochester, Gonick, and Milton. In the beginning, Roy's Dairy sold 36 quarts of milk a day. In the early days, the milk came in cannon jars. That changed when milk was delivered in returnable milk bottles. And finally, milk cartons that came on the scene in 1965. Decades passed in Rochester, and one of the constants was Roy's Dairy delivering milk. In the 1980s, Roy's Dairy was selling 4,500 quarts of milk daily. Local stores and homes were not the only clients of Roy's Dairy. The Rochester school system also used Roy's Dairy to supply the milk for the school lunches. A whole generation of Rochester students drank his milk every day at school. Henry also gave back to the community. He was the founder of the Men's Softball League in 1965 which initially played at the Rochester Commons. He also sponsored a local Bay Ruth team that won championships at the local and state level. Due to his support of local sports teams, he was overwhelmingly inducted into the Rochester Elk Sports Hall of Fame in 2001. Father Time was the only one to stop Henry Roy. In the 1990s, he retired and left the business for his family to run. In the mid-1990s, the Roy's Dairy business was sold to Westland Creamery at a Lynn Mass. After 50 years of supplying milk to thousands of customers, Roy's Dairy is now a memory of the good old days. And this ends the podcast. Any comments or questions, please email bobrufinpodcast at gmail.com. Come back next month for another episode of Rochester, New Hampshire History.